All right, to those of you who are new here, hello and welcome. And to those of you who are coming back to the channel, it's good to see you again. Uh, real quick, before we get started, I've decided that rather than awkwardly reiterate who I am at the start of each video, uh, I'm going to streamline things a bit and use this as my new uh, channel and video header. All of that old info that used to be here uh, about who I am and what I do and the purpose of the videos in this playlist series will now be packed in the video description down below along with the referral code that you see here on screen. Uh, if you're someone who doesn't have Star Citizen yet and you're thinking about getting into it, if you use my referral code on screen here when you create your account, you'll get some extra goodies, and depending on the time of year when you sign up, you may even get a free bonus ship with LTI in addition to the normal referral bonuses. Check Star Citizen's website for any info on sign-up bonus events that may or may not be running at the time that you go to create your account, as well as what ships may or may not be on offer for those sign-up bonuses. So, now that that's out of the way, let's get into today's video. Hello everybody, it has been a long time, hasn't it? Um, you know, good news is I'm no longer working on some, you know, contracts and stuff like that. Uh, I've, like, concluded my term and finished up, so I have a lot more free time. Uh, so you're probably going to be seeing these videos more often, uh, and I can finally get back to, to working on uh, my YouTube channel. Like I said I, I, in my previous videos, I was super busy and just didn't have time for this, and that's kind of why you haven't seen me for a while. Um, it wasn't really, you know, excuse. I was genuinely busy. But like I said, now that the uh, now that I've got more free time, you're gonna see more of me. So if you've been subscribed and stuck around and waiting and wondering where I've been, I mean, that's yeah, I've been working. Yeah, that's kind of where I've been. Uh, I do have a, a couple other things to cover. Um, one, I, I you know I ran into somebody in the game the other day, and I promised him a cameo, or or her. I don't know if it's a him or her. Um, and, you know, if, if you've been sub sub to my channel and you've been waiting for the video, you will be at the end, I, as I promised. Second announcement is that I have uh, finally set up a Discord. So if you guys want to, like, say hi to me, come hang out, do whatever you want to do, tell me you hate me, scream at me, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, that, that there's the Discord there. It'll be in the video description below, and I'm going to start adding it to my other videos description and stuff. So um, it's brand new. I just set it up. Uh, it's got some some different you know gaming stuff in there and some information and you know you'll 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 kind of see it's it's got like auto mod and you know reaction roles and you know once you once you get there and look around and start clicking on stuff it'll it'll all become pretty self apparent you guys know how Discord works. As for the topic of today's video, we're finally going to be talking about the long awaited weapons, and this is a video that I've dreaded doing because it's going to be stupidly long and complex and it's it, it my my big like you know videos with math and text and word salads that are really long don't really do very well, but I do think they are still important. Um, as for this, this like, picture in the background, this is just a pipe dream for me to masturbate to and think of, like, what could be. Um, yeah, I know, it's a weird joke, and I, in fairness, I never said I was weird, but if you're playing a military game with, like, spaceships and, and military things that are, like, armed to the teeth, and you're not getting all hot and bothered by it, like, I, 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 are you really a fan? I don't. I don't think we can be friends. You know, we're just too different. <laughs> but yeah, like if if you're looking at this, I mean, this is the ideal rework. Um, it was mostly just here as something to have you guys to look at while I'm I'm talking initially and doing the setup. But I, this is how I would do the, the 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 Gladiator rework. It doesn't even need a model change. That's the worst part. Like you can literally just go in and edit the hard points and add the missing weapons, and you're Gucci. We actually have the size 3 bomb right now in the game files. We have size 1 through 3 rocket pods in three different varieties uh, in the files. And if you've seen my gladiator video of like, you know, where's the air to ground loadout, you'll you'll have seen that stuff. Um, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Alright, so getting into the meat and potatoes of today's videos, the actual weapons of the ships, and how I would do a, a rework if I was a CIG dev. It's a very large topic, like I said, and so we're going to start like just knocking this out in no particular order. Um, and the first one I have to do is I have to complain, because you know you know why you're here. I, I know why I'm here. You guys come to listen to me yell at CIG for doing dumb things, and the first dumb thing I see is fucking spaceship shotguns. Like... First person shooter stuff, okay, makes sense. Maybe, maybe a canister shell on a tank, but this isn't World War II, and we have far more effective ranged versions of that with like air burst munitions with frag sleeves. So, why? I have to ask why. Out of every other gun you could have given us, you chose to give us space friggin' shotguns. Like, what's. 
What's next? Space flamethrowers? Space squirt guns, perhaps? Space water balloon launchers for missiles? Maybe maybe Molotov cocktails for missiles? Like, with, really? Shotguns. No flak, no rail guns, no, no beam weapons. I mean, God, beam weapons alone is its own freaking category. You can do so many things with beam weapons. No damage over time weapons, like plasma or anything like that. No high pen rail guns. I, again, out of everything they could have given us, fucking space shotguns. Oh, all right. I'm not saying you're retarded. You're showing it to me, CIG. And, and uh, okay, I, I get it. And before somebody like is is gonna sit there and say, "Oh, this guy's opinionated and stuff," I like the shotguns. Look, I'm not trying to take it away from me if you like it, but objectively speaking, it doesn't make any friggin' sense. And. Personally, I never would have made spaceship shotguns. Like, it's just weird. Some sort of, like, energy wave type gun or something like that that fills a role similar to it. Maybe. Probably not. You know, honestly, out of everything else I just ranted off, there are so many other options. So we're going to get into that. Um, we're also going to get into how I would do a rework, what kind of issues I see now versus in the future, how I would address them. And it's going to be a holistic system that also includes thinking about things like armor in the future too it's not just going to be oh i would change this dps in this range no no it's going to be a big one it, we are going to go after everything so i don't have to make another video now the first thing i want to address is weapon ranges um and more so not like on a case-by-case -case basis i mean we'll, we'll get there too but more on a kind of like a generalist basis like for example in star citizen right now currently Gatling guns and repeaters have a higher range than cannons. Like, if you look here, you see ammo speed and range right there. Versus the cannon. Shorter range, lower velocity. I, I, I don't know in what universe a cannon has a shorter range than a than a Gatling gun. Velocity, sure, that makes sense. But I it, it just it drives me nuts. I hate that it has a higher weapon range than a cannon and and the other thing that's like really weird let me uh let me make this laser repeater so it's uh so it's uh like and like so the the second thing that's really crazy is the the burst dps is the same which is you know that's that's okay um i wouldn't do it that way but cannons have a higher sustained damage than gatling guns <laughs> like what like none of that makes any sense i i I fundamentally hate the way this stuff is set up. So I'm going to show you a different, better way of doing it. All right, we are going to start by scrapping and rebuilding everything in more ways than one. Because this is the second time I'm shooting this part because, well, my power went out and I lost everything that I was working on. So there's four hours of work gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm more than a little bit salty about that. I, I almost just said F it today. So, I'm, I'm starting this segment again quite a bit later. Anyway, starting with the weapons. Um, like I said, scrap everything, redo it. Think of burst damage like raw damage, you know, and we're going to look at this and use this for metrics for balancing. So, the rules for the burst damage are as follows. Cannons and howitzers have full damage for that size of weapon. So, you always compare cannons, autocannons, and repeaters within the same weapon size class. Or same weapon size so like we would only compare them to size threes if it was a size three weapon you'd only compare a, a size two to another size two weapon when deciding how much dps it should have right now in the base game things are pretty arbitrary um, i do think they should scale and you should get more damage as the weapon size gets higher but we'll get into that later um, back in the day it was also really arbitrary i mean it was even worse than it is now like right now, they, they made a lot of things uniform, but there are there is still some things that are arbitrary and doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, uniformity is bad. That is not balanced. People need to learn the difference. But I digress. Anyway, so cannons within the same size bracket have full damage, and that's the metric we use. Auto cannons and heavy repeaters will have 8% less damage than the cannons, and repeaters will have 16% less damage than the cannons. Now, for... Again, burst damage is considered raw damage. For sustained damage, um, this would be the rule set here. So repeaters and gatlings would be the high sustain um, weapon system, like I said. Uh, auto cannons and 
heavy repeaters would be kind of in the middle there, and then cannons what would have the most alpha, the longest range, the, the highest accuracy, but would suffer from the worst sustain and the slowest velocity. So an example of this in practice right here, like say we had a size 2 weapon for the sake of an example, we would have a cannon and howitzer burst damage of 400 DPS, but the sustain damage would only be 240. And then we have auto cannons and heavy repeaters, you know, as you can see, the raw damage is slightly less in keeping with this up here. However, because it is higher with sustained damage than it is for the cannons and howitzers, even though it has less DPS, it actually has more sustained DPS, as you can see right here. I know it's kind of confusing, and there's a lot of math and stuff going on. That's why I've kind of made these examples. Then you have the repeaters and gatlings, and they have the lowest raw DPS, but the highest sustained DPS, like I said before. Now, again, the reason you wouldn't want to use these things over cannons 24-7, and you would still want to use the cannons for taking on larger targets, is because of the damage over time effect combined with the raw DPS. So say I have two minutes of ammo for both of these guns. Um, the, the, the cannon, over time, even though it has less sustained DPS, is going to do more damage than the repeater or gatling will over the life of its like magazine and the longer the battle drags on so long as i have ammo the wider that gap gets <clears throat> but we're getting ahead of ourselves so let's move on to the next thing um, another rule that we would use is the energy weapons would be the benchmark for the damage in that weapon size category um, so for example uh, say we had a, a size 2 projectile gun all right and we would compare, we'll say this projectile gun is a, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's like a howitzer, an autocannon, or whatever, it should have roughly 20% more damage than the like counterpart of that weapon that is energy-based within the same size category. And it's really hard to explain. What I mean by that is, if I have a size 2 Gatling that is ballistic, it should have 20% higher raw DPS than a size 2 energy Gatling. If that makes sense. Now, this is where we start getting back into ammo limitations. Frankly, we need more ammo. And I, I, during a ship interview with the devs, John Crew was actually genuinely confused and sat there and said, do we players really need more ballistic ammo? We want it to be limited. We want you to eventually have to go back and, and resupply. It's like a balancing factor. And he, he was actually confused. And this floored me because, you know, I'm in... When I when I work on like as as a contract developer, I'm typically like a, a temporary, like middle management type thing. And part of my job is to track stuff like that and know what the hell is going on with the freaking game and the system. Otherwise, I can't do my job properly and I can't build holistic solutions that effectively mesh with what is going on in the game. Like uh, an armor system, uh, and part of the armor system is to track what the hell the weapons are doing. Otherwise. How do you know if your armor system's effective if your weapons are not accounted for? So when he genuinely had no idea that we have freaking... That, that we have weapon systems in the game that... I mean, the 85 is, is an example of one with a decent amount of ammo. But we have other ballistic weapons in the game that have freaking 10 seconds of ammo. 15 seconds of ammo. Really high rate of fire weapons. You know? I mean... Okay, bad example. Is it actually... I'm curious. There's a repeater. We'll stick repeater. Yeah, perfect. Right there. They got like 16 seconds of ammo and only... 11k damage. Like, what? what is going on? Compare that with this. With my system, if you had cannons that had the highest uh, alpha and the highest burst damage versus repeaters that had a lower overall damage but a higher sustain, the repeaters would still be weaker for dealing damage to larger targets than a cannon would. Because if the over the life of the magazine, the cannon would have more overall damage than the repeater would. But John Crew didn't know... Like, had no clue that basically every other, like, Gatling in the game is crap in terms of damage. Like, it's got 
300 ammo or less on a 1,100 rate of fire freaking weapon, you go, brr, and you're empty. And I, I'm sitting there wondering, how can this be? And it's because they're not playing the freaking live version of the game. I don't even think they know that the live version of the game exists half the time. Because it wasn't until the, I almost said IA, not IA, what's the other one? Citizen Con. The Citizen Con that they just streamed um, some Squadron 42 stuff. And we saw a little Gladius with the rework with like over 3,000 rounds of ammo for its tiny little, uh, what is it, Mantis Gatling gun. I mean, that is just bonkers. Yeah, this thing, right now, in the live version, this thing has two seconds of ammo and does nothing. You know? I would love to have three <laughs> freaking thousand rounds of ammo. That's over... Jeez, that's three freaking minutes of ammo! That's nuts! That's almost perfect! So, that is about what I would do. I, I mean, I would... I, I would have about two minutes worth of ammo of sustained firing time for... for, um... for fixed weapons. And then for turreted weapons... I'd, uh, I'd, I'd triple it, about six minutes worth. And then, like I was saying earlier, with the second component um, of, of ammo limitations and, and factoring things in for raw damage, um, if you would have cannons still being preferable for dealing with larger targets with more hit points, because if you fire your magazine over the course of two minutes with 500 DPS in an example, that's 60k damage. Now, if you have the size 2 repeater and the same thing following the rules, you may have higher, uh, like, um, sustained damage, but because you're lower overall damage, like, lower overall raw damage combined with you still have only two minutes worth of ammo, that results in a 50.4k damage um, pool versus the cannon 60. And that only gets worse the longer you, uh, the longer you drag the battle on. Say you have... Uh, there was a plan forever ago to be able to take missile mounts off of fighters and stuff and add, like, ammunition extensions, like magazines and stuff, or, uh, or weapon capacitors for energy weapons to extend your, your ammo pools. I don't know if they're still going to do that. I hope they do at some point, but I think they realized not every ship is designed like the Gladius or the Gladiator, where it has these nice, like, exposed weapon mounts that are free. A lot of ships have uh, missile mounts that are bespoke and integrated into the ship. So that would mean that they'd have to design a whole bunch of these individual ammo boxes and capacitors. So that's a nightmare. That's probably why we don't have them right now. But hypothetically speaking, for the sake of the example, say you drug the same the same example on over a three minute period instead of two minutes, well then that gap starts widening even more. Now you have 90k overall damage, potentially, for the cannon versus only 75.6k for the repeater. Now so sustainment is a massive, massive issue that needs to be tackled with a weapon rework. And then, speaking of sustainment, there's another thing that I think you should consider. Um, sustainment modifiers between kinetics and projectiles should be different, and by that I mean modifying parts of your ship to get the weapon closer to its theoretical maximum, which is burst damage, should be handled differently. So in the case of a projectile, you should have heat generation, and thus if you want to have higher sustained damage, you should invest in better cooling for your ship. This is where getting coolers used to come in and help you out. Whereas with energy weapons, you should need more power and, and have like a, a higher a power draw with them. So if you want to have better sustain and quicker recharge and stuff like that with your energy-based weapons, you want to have an oversized power plant and invest in that and have a lot of excess power. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing um, anything with the upcoming battery and capacitor system that they were talking about. I mean, I'm sure they will, and of course, like, adding, you know, power to weapons and stuff would uh, help cooling and prioritize cooling weapons uh, if it was projectile or prioritize shunting more power into your energy weapons, just like it does now. But, um, yeah, I'm not really sure where they're going to go with, with this stuff in the future. But that's how I would have it. I mean, I think that's a great balancing system. And it used to be like that back in the day, too. Um, before they made everything uniform and 
shitty with their like refactor that was supposed to be temporary and never got addressed since it's been like five plus years so you know i really do hope that they bring that system back because that was really cool moving on to oh yes so i would probably keep missiles and torpedoes what they are right now with the 70 percent uh, penetration however um, in terms of, like, kinetic weapons and stuff, I would probably lower that to 50%. In fact, no, I wouldn't probably. I would absolutely lower that to 50%. Um, and then lower the general ship's armor resistance and stuff from 50% to 30%. Um, unless it's, like, a, a heavily armored, like, special military ship that has extra resistances, and then you can make it a little higher or something like that. Um... Now, some of you who can do quick math may be, like, realizing and asking right now that this sounds like I'm changing the kinetics for no reason, and that the before and after damage of the current system versus what it is right now would actually be about the same. Yes and no. Um, so, to say I had 100 damage for a weapon... 70% of it getting through, that's 70% of my damage, is hitting the hull, 30% is hitting the shield. Of that 70% that's hitting the hull, currently, 50% of that is, is eaten by the, the ship's arbitrary armor resistance, leaving me uh, 35 damage, like 35 pure damage. Now, in an updated system like what I've said, 50% of the, the damage would get eaten by the shield, 50% would bleed through. So, if you have 100 damage, that's 50 getting through. 30% of 50 is 15, so 15 minus 50 is 35. That's still 35 damage. So, again, you're, you're probably asking yourself, like, like why, why do this? Well, the reason I do this is because it gives you a net, like, 66% increase in damage to the shields, um, which allows their, the, the, the kinetics to still fulfill their role as bypassing shields and attacking the hull directly, but it also allows them to contribute more to whittling down shields in a group fight. And it also allows shields to kind of play more of a role in helping protect your ship. Because right now, everything is basically going through and it's creating a, a bottleneck that's on the armor as opposed to the shields. Back in the day, we used to have 30% bypass and that was too little. Um, because it did almost nothing, but then CIG does what devs do, or most devs, and they just like overfuck it in the opposite direction. So now we have too much going through, and then they said, "Oh, as a balancing factor, we're bringing up the uh, the the raw resists on ships hulls to 50%." And well, what happens? When they do that, combined with making missiles basically dog shit useless by lowering their damage, is we have ships that just aren't dying to missile shots and resisting way, way too much kinetic damage. So that is kind of why I would make that change. Um, there are reasons for it, even if it like isn't immediately uh, obvious running the uh, the, the numbers there. Um, and I've, I've kind of explained those reasons. Another balancing thing I would do um, between like uh, the, the kinetic versus energy debate on like who's better is I would have energy cannons and just energy weapons in general have slightly lower dispersion than the uh, projectile weapons. And a lot of that is because they don't have the raw damage or the shield bypass like projectiles do. So they're getting a, uh, an advantage there. Um, and you, you, know, you can kind of read my notes here and see this. Uh, and now we're going to get into some actual examples of everything at play. So it should start looking a lot easier um, to understand. And right here at the size 7 example, like, this is your Gatling repeater uh, for the energy-based um, uh, uh, stats. So you would have 621 alpha, 500 RPM, and this would be your your burst damage and your sustained damage. And then this would be your, your projectile-based version. How many of you would be going mental right now and be super happy if this was your raw uh, damage numbers for your Ares uh, Inferno? I know I would. Um, I also think that the Inferno's rate of fire is too high. Maybe they should lower it, um, because it is like a special AD series gun. I think they should lower it from the 1300 RPM and maybe do like 800 RPM. And by doing that, combined with these higher DPS numbers, that means your alpha is going to go up a lot higher. Meaning, when you hit somebody, 
they're going to feel it, and your your giant Gatling gun is going to feel more potent. And I think that's a good thing, because I, I don't think that they should have these, like, tickle cannons that you have to, to point at the target forever. Granted, light fighters and stuff like that aren't really the thing's focus, but at the same time, if you fly down the throat of this thing, you're at fault and you should die. I don't care that people like Avenger 1 and the others just bitch and scream up a storm because they wanted to fly their uh, toxic-ass light fighter down the throat of something with, like, a giga-mega kill cannon, all right? These, these Ares fighters have the worst agility in the game of anything called a fighter, and as a balancing factor, I may even make it a little bit worse than it is right now. Not much worse, but maybe a little bit worse. Just to really emphasize the fact that if you get in front of this thing as another fighter and die, it's 100% your fault, especially after I a, uh, buff the Psy-7 weapons and make them great again. Um, I kind of should have saved that for like an Ares rant, but I really don't want to do a video on that. I might still do a video on that, and I'll basically just repeat myself. G getting back on topic here, you can see that uh, the damage scales up with each size increase that you have here. So does the alpha, and then the rate of fire scales down, which I like because on like a size 7 gun, for example, you're, you're, you are a Gatling, yes, with your, uh, the Inferno, but you're basically shooting, like, 3-inch Sherman gun rounds out of this thing, or, like, 90-millimeter, you know, tank rounds out of this thing. Fully automatic. That's a little ridiculous. The, your, your rate of fire should go down for a number of reasons. One, um, it, it helps it by giving it higher alpha, which makes it feel punchier and, and, and beefier. Two, it helps the server. It has less stuff to track, you know? And, and, and any time the server has less stuff to track is a better thing because their spaghetti code and their their networking issues are just off the charts. So anything we can do to lighten that up, fantastic. And then we can, you know, move on to the auto cannons and heavy repeaters is like the middle of the road type weapon. Again, I, I foresee these weapons being the I don't really want to over specialize. I just kind of want to do everything, maybe not as well as the specializations, but I'm just going to build a daily driver for my PvE, PvP, Omni setup kind of thing. And, you know, I, I just don't want to be min-maxing. That's kind of how I see the, uh, the, the middle-of-the-road weapon system option here. And that's how I've had it set up um, in terms of, like, balancing. It really is the middle-of-the-road. There are some other weapons that I'm... This, this video is getting so long, and I'm not even close to being done so I, I unfortunately i'm probably going to have to break this into a two-parter but we'll we'll stuff as much as we can into this one um i'll talk more about like penetration and, and armor stuff more in the second video um so let's just uh continue on to finish this i mean again this is all the energy based versions of the cannons and the howitzers and auto cannons yada 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 uh if you want to kind of get an idea of the projectile variant of each one of these weapons in the same size class just add 20 percent more um burst and sustain and you'll you're pretty much be there uh and then let's look at range scaling so range scaling is another thing that i would do uh so repeaters as like a base benchmark or base tier benchmark would kind of be like what i'm starting with Auto cannons would have 15% more range than repeaters. Cannons would have 30% uh, more range than repeaters. Um, range scaling between sizes kind of starts at size 3 because size 1 and 2, I mean, these are basically like handheld weapons or like heavy weapons that's like mounted on like a, like a vehicle. Um, serious like large vehicle sized weapons don't really start being a thing until about size 3. And with the way I have like range scaling, between the tiers taking place. If I was to start at size 2, the further down you go, you start getting bonkers ranges. And I really do not think that CIG can uh, can make a... I mean, it's possible to do, but I don't think CIG can do it with their server and their netcode um, to have real long-range fights. I mean, it's just a friggin' mess. Um, like I said, it's possible, I just don't know if CIG can do it. Uh, plus, it's not really in line with their design philosophy of having the closer range, more visceral fights. But as you can see here, you know, we've got the repeaters 
as the benchmark. And then we got the auto cannons, which is kind of like the in between. And we see the uh, the range go higher for each of these, but the velocity go down for each of these. So like the bigger the gun, the lower the velocity. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Like in theory, the application for these things is going to be really good. Uh, except for the spread at the extreme range, which would be around like 24 meters. Whereas the cannon would have a really high range, lower velocity, um, and, but a much better spread at like half of that of a uh, repeater. But because of the velocity again, you know, he's going to want to get closer to the target, especially a small target, to try and land the hits. Whereas the repeater is going to be encouraged to get closer to the target um, for spread reduction. And I'm actually going to tab over and show you an example of spread right now. So here we have a, a pair of examples. So we've got our, our cannon here and it takes one second for it to get to the halfway mark uh, for the projectile. And that would be about a three meter cone. Now that's very, very accurate. Um, I don't remember if I, I split these into like energy versus projectile, or if I just assumed it was all projectile, these could be old numbers, but the, the, the example holds the same, so just don't worry about it. Um, versus repeaters, same thing. Uh, look, you're much, much faster velocity, like 40% higher velocity than cannons. So getting to the halfway mark of the weapons uh, range only takes about half a second. It is a lower range than this one by about, you know, like I said, about 30%-ish. Um, but again, so that's closer to 25 just because of the way the math works because we're working backwards. It's anyway, but again, you can kind of see how spread affects the repeater versus velocity affects the cannon. So the cannon may be more accurate in theory, but he's lobbing around and there's a lot of uh, lag time. A lot of, you know, even in the current version of the game right now, you know that even though we have a 1400 meter a second um, speed on these uh, repeaters, you want to get to about the halfway mark in order to land hits for a number of reasons, because even in a half a second, let alone a full second or two seconds, ships can WASD move all over the place. That is a long travel time in a dogfight. So that is why I've set this thing up as an intentional balancing factor. Now, we'll pretend this is your spaceship and these two spaceships are the same size target for the uh, for the example here at your maximum range you would have a 24 meter cone versus closing into half of your maximum range you only have a 12 meter cone what this essentially does is it has a four times multiplier of sh shots hitting your target here versus shots hitting your target here and that is why having a a, a, a spread system is so important for balance between the, the, the two classes. Another reason that I really want to have scaling for, for range and, and damage and stuff is not only to reward larger ships that have bigger guns on them, I also want to kind of break up the current meta, which is not even healthy right now, of having a bunch of uh, small guns is better than having uh, fewer larger guns because we don't have armor in the game right now, and we really need to have it, and having larger guns needs to be uh, something that you are rewarded for, as opposed to just sticking with a bunch of smaller guns. This system addresses that. All right, right here, you've got a slower target um, that is orbiting a, a ship, and the ship is able to track it. Now, that only works with uh, slower targets. Faster targets orbiting you in tight like this can just dodge shots left right and center now in star citizen half of the reason is because they're too fast the other half of the reason is because they are so small they can literally get in between the spread pattern and stuff or the the projectile um velocity since there's no difference in range or velocity between the sizes they can just sit there at max range versus a larger target and spray it with 100% accuracy, and you're only hitting them with a fraction of your damage because they are physically smaller than you are, and all of the weapons have the same stats. So, right now, light fighters can just kick the shit out of hammerheads, which are specifically designed to actually kill the, the light fighters. Part of that is because they don't have armor in the game and aren't able to ignore their shots, but a large part of that, in fact, most of that, 
is because the weapons are not able to effectively deal with them because of how small they are. And if we were to have a larger range on this and push the fighters out to this like minimum safe zone to make it where they don't orbit us in in tight at like uh, 750 meters they have to start orbiting us at 1.5 kilometers well then let's say let's say my ship is being orbited here you know uh by it, it, with the, the current games example that right there to get behind us is a heck of a lot smaller than that is right there. I mean, that's almost, it doesn't look like it, but that's like three to four times the distance that you have to travel. And if you have to travel a higher distance, then my slower maneuvering ship, like the Hammerhead, would actually have an easier time getting its nose pointed at the target. If it gets its nose pointed at the target, now I can start using all of my missiles and stuff like that's on a Connie or Hammerhead or these larger ships to start firing at these guys. It also pushes them outside of arming distance. Like the minimum range arming distance is about this. Whereas this is actually underneath uh, missile range. So if I was to have these bigger weapons and this guy tried to orbit me, it's, it's like 750 meters or whatever. I would shred the shit out of him, which is a fantastic thing to do. Cause I would only have like a six meter cone uh, for my AOE, and I'd be hitting him in freaking a, a quarter of a second. As long as I could track him, of course. I mean, there is still tracking and pilot skill involved, but th we're talking about the raw mechanics. Right now, the raw mechanics don't allow it, and the system I'm proposing here would fix 90% of those issues. Uh, okay, so going back to this here... Um, and trying to wrap up this video. As you can see here, I start having range scaling take place at around size three, like I said, and the size three repeater is the cannon range of the previous sizes, um, well, they're the previous size guns cannon. So right here will be the next size up repeater. Uh, rail guns, mass drivers like uh, Gauss cannons and beam weapons and stuff are specialty weapons. Um, I will cover those in the next video because like I said, this is getting way too long. So I'll cover armor penetration, uh, missiles, penetration mechanics for armor and stuff for the weapons versus the specialty stuff like flak and high pen um, weapons like rail guns, how they, because the, there's like special rules in there. I'll explain how to make beam weapons actually good and i know somebody right here is probably seeing hit scan and fucking screaming their head off like the the guy from the office going no god please um but i assure you i've 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 got examples i i've thought of it all don't worry i'll explain it in the next video um and then oh and as promised um i'm ending it right here but as promised i will show that little like uh that cameo that i mentioned to that person that I uh, that I said I would do. So I'm going to end it now and show it. Someone asked me the other day, why do you use cannons? And well, the answer is simple because this is the way. Obviously, I mean, look, look at it. I don't I don't need repeaters. They give you more damage. I mean, they're just all around amazing. Watch this. Just hammering this guy's shields. Another guy said, because you're using cannons, instant, like, subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Shields. See, he, he knows the way. That, that right there. This is the way. <laughs> the way is cannon. Where do you want to go? Smile for YouTube, bro.
Hey, can you still put uh, uh, kinetics on that thing? Or did they lock it to where you can't rip the guns off? <laughs>